We've been lucky enough to visit Iceland multiple times in the past couple years, and we've had the chance to experience three different geothermal spas. The world-famous Blue Lagoon, the Sky Lagoon, and most recently, the Forest Lagoon. The question is, are they all worth your money? And if so, how do they compare to each other? And do you really need to experience every single one of them? In this video, we're going to show you what each of these three lagoons has to offer and give you our honest opinion of our experience there. Without further ado, let's start with the outrageously famous Blue Lagoon. Everyone and their mothers have heard of this place and everyone and their mothers have it on their bucket lists or may have even booked a trip to Reykjavik specifically to go here. But let's be honest, you've probably heard mixed reviews about this one. It's too crowded, the water is not even blue. Yay, let's bathe in possible radioactive wastewater from a power plant. Well, let's start from the exact moment you arrive to the Blue Lagoon. When the smell hits, you might even get put off from entering the lagoon, let alone bathe in it. What you smell is sulfur from the geothermal activity on the island. And the lagoon itself doesn't smell as bad as the outside, I promise. There may be a naggy scent to it, but you get used to it quite quickly. As you walk to the entrance of the lagoon, you'll be surrounded by centuries-old moss. You might be tempted to sit, step or even touch it, but you shouldn't. Moss is super sensitive and it takes decades for it to recover if it's damaged, so please leave it alone. There are a few different passes to the Blue Lagoon, and if you choose the most expensive one, you'll get to go to a different changing room. We haven't treated ourselves to the more luxurious one, so we don't know how different it is from the normal ones. But the main changing room is quite large and still can get very busy. No one ever follows this rule, but you shouldn't go in with your shoes on, because people walk around barefoot. Another nasty thing people do is not taking a full shower before going in the lagoon. I'm not sure why that is. It could be because they think they'll be too cold if they go in wet, but honestly, wash your ass before you go in. And if you have long hair, tie it up and don't let it touch the water unless you fancy having straw-like hair. And unless you really like the cold, go through this door, which gives you immediate access to the lagoon. Speaking of cold, if you're wondering if it's too cold to go to the lagoon, even if it's raining or snowing, it's really not. The water is warm enough to make you feel cozy even in stormy, freezing weather. One of the best things about the lagoon is that your pass includes a drink and a face mask. Granted, the tickets are the most expensive from all three lagoons, but at least you get some perks. The silica face mask leaves your skin feeling very hydrated, but make sure you remove it with fresh water from the taps nearby, not the pool water. It's extremely salty and it will sting your eyes and taste really bad. Then go get yourself a drink. The slushies taste extra nice when you're feeling too warm in the lagoon. I tend to go for the traditional Icelandic soda. Now, the water in the Blue Lagoon leaves your skin feeling amazing. As someone with a skin condition, this water is actually miraculous. It's proven to help with eczema. I got eczema. I got what? I got eczema. <laughs> and psoriasis. You can stay as long as you want, but most people leave after two hours, looking like very relaxed and hydrated raisins. Overall, we love the Blue Lagoon and think it's absolutely worth it especially if it's your first time in the country and you want to experience something different. It's pretty pricey, so take that into consideration, but obviously you're paying for the experience. And yes, the natural hot pools are nice, but the Blue Lagoon is a spa, so you're paying for that luxury. Will you have the perfect Instagrammable experience you're imagining? Probably not, but that doesn't mean you won't have a great time here anyway. We've visited three times and haven't regretted a single penny we've spent. Next, we're heading to the beautiful Sky Lagoon. This is the most recent geothermal spa in Reykjavik, and so the facilities are more modern than the Blue Lagoons. The designers also did an excellent job with merging the lagoon into the landscape, making it look so natural it almost seems like it's been there the whole time. The first difference between the Blue Lagoon and the Sky Lagoon, besides the looks, is the price. The Sky Lagoon is a bit cheaper. However, you don't get a drink or a face mask included in your ticket. In fact, the Sky Lagoon does not offer face masks. However, the Sky Lagoon has a whole seven-step ritual, which you can enjoy if you purchase the Pure Pass. 
You also get a private changing room if you get the sky one, but personally, I don't think that's worth it. If you haven't watched this video in which we show you how we struggle with the ritual, go give it a watch. This is not for me. No. Basically, we hated every step that involved heat. The rain room is pretty cool, but in our opinion, you can enjoy the sky lagoon perfectly if you only pay to access the lagoon itself. You don't need much else when you have a waterfall and a cold plunge pool if you like that sort of thing. Plus, you get incredible views of the ocean. The water here is clear, so you can even swim in it. And it's okay to dip your hair in it too. Remember to wash your ass before getting in the pool. The shampoo and body wash at this lagoon are wonderful. There's one thing I don't like about the showers though. The doors are really short and you can't help but make eye contact with people while they're washing yourself sometimes. Other than that, I like everything about this lagoon. You can get crowded, especially at sunset, but we've had some pretty magical moments here. It's our go-to lagoon when we visit the area and recommend it to everyone. The last time we were in Iceland, we also visited a new lagoon, the Forest Lagoon. This one is located in Akureyri, in northern Iceland, and it's quite far from Reykjavik, so it's much less famous than the Blue and the Sky Lagoons. I think our expectations were a bit too high, but we ended up disappointed. First, you don't get a free towel. We paid around £7 for each towel, and that was very unexpected. And the price of the ticket for the Forest Lagoon certainly should mean you get the towel included, but no. If you can bring your own towel, great, but honestly, this annoyed us so much, it dampened the experience from the start. The one plus of coming here is that it's not nearly as popular as the other lagoons, so you don't see as many people and the changing rooms are much less crowded. I was completely alone in the changing room at some point. One thing I noticed is that there were way more Icelanders than tourists here. I think we may have been 2 out of 5 tourists amongst at least 30 Icelanders. The pool is much smaller than the others, but the temperature is just as nice. The water is clear, apart from the moss that's floating on it, and there's another smaller pool next to it with a higher temperature. I really enjoyed cooking it like an oversized potato. We weren't expecting to be able to hear the cars in the highway nearby, but unfortunately the acoustics are not great, so don't think you'll only hear birdsong and wind rustling through leaves while you're in the pool. We also tried the sauna and quickly quit the idea because it smelled nasty. I'm sure it's not always the case, but that day it stunk of a fishy smell that may have come from someone's feet, so we stuck to the pool. Besides having to pay for the towels and the stinky sauna, our experience here was pretty relaxing. However, we have to admit it's not nearly as luxurious as going to the Blue Lagoon and definitely not as relaxing as going to the Sky Lagoon. It's a nice experience if you want to go somewhere with a more local feel, but other than that, I'd honestly skip it. It may be more fun for you if you've brought your own towels to enjoy a dip in the nearby hot waterfall. That's right, a hot waterfall. In conclusion, we think you should experience the Blue Lagoon at least once, the Sky Lagoon as many times as you can, and you won't be missing out on much if you never go to the Forest Lagoon. All three lagoons offer very different experiences, but our favorite by far is the Sky Lagoon. If you've ever been to any of these lagoons, let us know what you thought in the comments below, and if you've never been to any of them, tell us which one is at the top of your list. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to like it and check out our Iceland series. See you next time.